Thanos sought to bring balance to the universe, and because of his utilitarian view, believed the galaxy headed towards overpopulation that would eventually destroy the universe. In his mind, he wasn't destroying the universe, but saving it. But what Thanos didn't know was that his actions would have a profound effect on a galaxy far, far away. Let's begin this story during Revenge of the Sith, right after Anakin defeated Count Dooku. They successfully have another happy landing, where Obi-Wan and Anakin land half of Grievous' ship on Coruscant. They had successfully saved Chancellor Palpatine from the Separatists, but unbeknownst to them, this was part of Palpatine's plan. They meet with Master Windu and other Senators, where Palpatine praises the Jedi's help once again. Anakin walks with the politicians, but he breaks off after he senses his wife Padme standing nearby and hugs her deeply as he hasn't seen her in weeks. They embrace and Padme shares the good news that she's pregnant and they're going to have a child. Anakin's smile fills up his face, a child, something he always wanted and he's having one with the love of his life. He could not be happier and everything in his life is falling into place. He embraces her again, deeper this time, but feels Padme's back go soft. She mutters Anakin's name under her breath as she steps back and Anakin can't believe what he's witnessing. Padme's body slowly disappearing as she turns into dust. He goes to catch her, but his hands simply fall through and she becomes nothing more than a pile of particles. Anakin puts his hands over his head as he's struck with panic. How did this happen? Who did this? How can he get her back? But a scream from behind breaks this train of thought as he rushes over to where the politicians were to find them in disarray. Senator Organa, what happened? And the senator tells Anakin that half of them including Mace Windu and Chancellor Palpatine, turned to dust. Anakin can't believe it, as he tells Organa he's witnessed the exact same thing with Senator Amidala. Organa tells Anakin they need to ascertain how widespread this is, but Anakin can't get his mind off his wife. What they would learn shortly after is that this happened around the entire galaxy. Every planet, every civilization, in the Senate and Jedi Order, had 50% of their people reduced to atoms. Anakin rushes to the Senate, where he knows the Jedi Council will be. On the way, he contacts Ahsoka, but doesn't hear anything from her, and contacts Bo-Katan, who tells Anakin that it happened to Ahsoka as well, that she disappeared right in front of her. Anakin drops to one knee, another person he cares about, gone. His mind fills with Obi-Wan, and begs that he's still alive. But luckily he sees Kenobi in the Senate halls, right outside the Jedi's chamber. He embraces his master in a hug, Obi-Wan, it's good to see you, but Ahsoka, Padme, they're gone. Obi-Wan notices how distressed Anakin is, and his mention of Padme concludes it in his mind. Deep down he's always known of their relationship, but kept it hidden for his sake, but understands the distress he feels because of her disappearance. Please calm down, Anakin. The Senate is sorting through this, and we'll have answers soon. It's going to be alright, Anakin. We'll get them back, I promise. After watching Padme disappear in front of him and learning Ahsoka faced the same fate, Anakin almost let the darkness inside consume him to let his grief and anger take over. Padme had just told Anakin about her pregnancy, giving Anakin the hope of having the family he's always dreamed of with the love of his life, but now she's gone. But Obi-Wan calmed him and gave him hope that kept him in the light. They listened to the Senate as Mas Amida explains how 50% of the galaxy's inhabitants have disappeared and they don't know why or whether they will return. But for now, they must maintain order and not let the Republic be consumed by chaos. The Jedi Council leave Mas Amida with the Senate and convene in the Council Chambers. Obi-Wan brings Anakin along, and the only Masters they saw present were Yoda, Obi-Wan, Kit Fisto, Plo Koon, Ki-Adi Mundi, and Shakti. And he knew what happened to the rest. Could this be a separatist plot? I don't think so. We have reports that this has also happened on separatist worlds. Could the Sith be behind this? Behind this? I think not. No longer feel the dark sides. Strength do I. Wonder whether the Sith Lord disappeared. I do. Silence encompasses the room as they think on this. And of course they were right. Yoda proclaims that they must get to the bottom of this. That the galaxy has never faced a tragedy like this in history. They do a joint meditation where Yoda guides them through all of them focusing their energy on recent events. They call on the force to give them answers, and it obliges. 
It shows them images of a huge battle, across a foresty terrain, but switches to images of a large purple alien, with a golden gauntlet, holding five stones, all of which they can sense the power emanating from. The being snaps his fingers, and the image ends, as the masters are thrust back into the council chambers. What was that? Who was that? The perpetrator of this. He must be. To reverse this, find him we must. We all sensed it, master. These images were not from our galaxy. What other galaxy? What could this mean? Alone, in the universe, we are not. And they were right. This was all happening on Earth, in a galaxy far, far away. Tell the Senate this. We must. And they do just this. They give their report to the Senate, and the rest of the Jedi Order, that this was caused by a conflict in a different galaxy that has nothing to do with their own. The Senate questions the Jedi if it's possible to reverse this, who say they'll try to, and begin putting a plan in place. But Anakin's resolve is strong. He will not stop until he brings Padme back. The war with the Separatists was not over, but with Palpatine and Grievous' disappearance, the Republic would no doubt take the advantage. But the Separatist Council, spearheaded by Sand Hill, quickly gets in contact with the Republic to call for a ceasefire until they can make sense of the situation, which was accepted. But more was happening on the side of the Separatists. The Geonosians heard of the report from the Jedi that this happened in a galaxy far, far away and knew if the Jedi were to get there, they would need their help. The Geonosians were known for their technological advancements and were the pioneers of the first Death Star plans. But their lead scientists have also been working on something else in secret a new type of warp drive, similar to the hyperspace drive that can create wormholes between galaxies and can be used to travel across the universe. But the technology was years off completion, but they knew if they had the help of the galaxy's top scientists, they could do this in five standard years. Because of this, the Geonosians met with the Jedi Council, as well as the Republic Security Council, and told them about the technology which could be used to travel to other galaxies. The Republic and Jedi Council were grateful for this, as they themselves were unable to come up with any plan to get to the other galaxy. The Geonosians were given all the resources they needed, as well as the employment of the top scientists around the galaxy to come work on the project, and production began. In the meantime, Obi-Wan and Anakin spent a lot of time together, and Anakin opened up about his marriage to Padme, her pregnancy, but only after Kenobi asked Skywalker about this. Obi-Wan continued to fill Anakin with hope that they would bring her back, but he would have to be patient and not let his negative emotions get the better of him. Anakin knew this was the case, that his emotions would not help, and did his best to stay positive. Him and Obi-Wan continued to train, and therefore Anakin's power in the Force continued to increase. He worked day in day out to help the Geonosians complete the technology. However, the Geonosians and scientists would reach a standstill. They spent three years developing the infrastructure for the warp drive, and had finally completed this, but no material they found in the galaxy had the power to fuel it, and without this, there was no hope of getting to the other galaxy. They pondered over this for almost a year, until Plo Koon rushes into the council chambers and tells them the solution has been under their noses the entire time, that there are already inhabitants in the galaxy that can travel between galaxies, the Purgles. The Purgles were a semi-sentient species of massive whales that lived in deep space, traveling from star system to star system, and often their groups travel between galaxies. The council thinks on this, and decides it's worth a shot. They begin an expedition to the Purgle colony, and are able to successfully study them and their movements. One bright scientist decides to extract some blood from the Purgles, and they analyze it, to realize it's a viable fuel to power the warp drive to use to get to the other galaxy. They finally have it, the key they've been looking for. The scientists began their final preparations, and after five long years, the intergalactic hyperspace warp drive was completed. During this time the Clone War was disbanded, and both sides came to agreeable peace treaties. This was because Palpatine and Dooku were no longer behind the Clone War. The Jedi Order assisted in the restoration of the galaxy after the conflict, even with their numbers 50% of what they previously were. But during these five years, Anakin's power in the Force grew immensely, and Obi-Wan saw it firsthand. He had exceeded him years ago, and wondered whether he was the strongest Jedi in the Order at this point. His base Force strength was superior to any other Jedi, as well as his skills with a lightsaber. He was appointed a seat on the Council, and the day came where they discussed the mission to the other galaxy. Finally the day upon us. 
It is our journey to the other galaxy. But who will go? I volunteer. Me too. Very well. Join you two, I will. Bring your clone commanders for support you must. And together, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Yoda, Rex, and Cody board their Jedi cruiser as they dock the warp drive ring and set course for the Milky Way galaxy. And their journey begins. They come out of hyperspace, right outside Earth's moon. As they travel towards the planet, they enter the atmosphere and are stopped by War Machine. They connected their communication systems with him and relayed a message that they come in peace and are non-aggressive. War Machine cleared their landing and brought them down to the surface outside the Avengers headquarters. This is happening right after the Avengers successfully figure out how to travel back in time as Hawkeye completed the first trial successfully. The Jedi exit the ship and are greeted by Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow and the Hulk. Tell them they've come from a galaxy far far away and are here to bring back those lost in the dusting five years ago. Captain America questions their intentions and wonders whether they've come to sabotage them or if they even have the strength to help. Blah, puny aliens. Hulk goes to punch Anakin to test him who stops his fist mid-air with the force and sends him back across the field into the wall with the force. The Avengers look at each other in surprise. The Avengers accept their help, the more the merrier, and they all head inside. The Avengers ask them what galaxy they're from, but Obi-Wan simply replies, telling them they don't know, as they didn't even know there were other galaxies until recently. They get inside, meet the rest of the team, Ant-Man, Rocket, Hawkeye, Nebula, and discuss their plan with them. They educate them on the Infinity Stones and Thanos, how Thanos obtained all six stones and used them to reduce the universe's population by 50%, but tells the Jedi their plan, that they're going to travel back in time, steal the stones, return to the future, bring everyone back, and then return the stones to where they came from to maintain the integrity of the timeline. They tell the Jedi that it's good they arrived, as they could use more help. They discuss what periods in history where they'll find the stones, that they only have enough pin particles for one round trip. First they figure out the locations of the stones. The Time Stone, Mind Stone and Space Stone can all be found in New York in 2012. The Reality Stone can be found on Asgard, the Power Stone can be found on Morag and the Soul Stone on Vormir in 2016. They divide up where each of them will go and determine that Anakin and Rex will go for the Soul Stone. Nebula, Black Widow, Obi-Wan and Cody will go for the Power Stone. Thor and Rocket will go for the Reality Stone and the rest will go to New York in the year 2012 for the last three. Together they gather on the time machine as Captain America gives them a pep talk, detailing the importance of their role here, that together they can bring back trillions of lives, that this is the fight of their lives, but that they'll win, whatever it takes. Anakin's resolve has never been stronger, that is ready to see Padme again. Hulk sets up the coordinates as the machine activates and they're all sent into the quantum realm as they travel into the past. The Avengers alongside Yoda arrive in New York 2012 during Loki's siege of the city. The battle is at its peak and they must do their best to stay hidden. Yoda and the Hulk go off separately to find the Time Stone, whereas the rest have their plan to find the other two. Yoda and Hulk reach the Sanctum Sanctorium, the home of Doctor Strange, where they're greeted by the Ancient One. Hulk asks her for the location of Doctor Strange, but she tells the Hulk that he's five years too early, that Stephen Strange is not a sorcerer yet, and asks them both why they've come, and the Hulk points at the time stone around her neck. Yoda stands next to Hulk and realizes this isn't going to be easy. The Ancient One tells Hulk that he can't have it, but he goes to take it by force as she strikes him in the chest and separates his consciousness from his body so he can no longer have contact with the physical world. She then turns to Yoda and tells him she can feel that he's wiser than the Hulk and is more willing to have a discussion than to use brute force. Right, you are wizard, but come for the same thing have I. But she tells Yoda that if she gives him the time stone to save his reality, it will only doom her own. Not how the force works, wizard. Leans towards balance, the force does. And doom her reality, it will not. But she explains to Yoda how removing the time stone will create a branched reality and doom her new reality and asks whether his force can prevent that. Prevent it. It does not have to. Restore the timeline we will. Place the stones back in the exact location in which we take them we will. And save the galaxy. Help us you will have. But the Ancient One tells Yoda that in order to do this, he must survive his travels. 
survived for 800 years. A little longer. Think I can. But she remains stubborn and tells Yoda that she cannot give him the stone until Hulk speaks up, asking why Doctor Strange gave it to Thanos then. This catches the Sorcerer Supreme off guard and questions why Doctor Strange would do this. But then she realizes it, that Strange must have given up the stone for a reason. And therefore she hands Yoda the time stone and knows Doctor Strange must have given Thanos the time stone as part of a greater plan. Next we go to Morag, where Obi-Wan, Cody, Nebula and Black Widow wait for Quill to arrive so he can lead them to the Power Stone. They see him dancing, knock him out and head towards the Power Stone. However, what they didn't expect is that Nebula's technological brain would be a problem for them as the Nebula from the future instantly connected with the Nebula from the past. The Nebula that was still working alongside Thanos, her father. Thanos had ordered Nebula and Gamora to go find the Power Stone, but as he does this, the Nebula of the past falls to the ground and projects a hologram of Black Widow, Obi-Wan and Cody looking for the Power Stone. They investigate this further and pierce into the past Nebula's mind, which is connected to the future Nebula. They look through her memory file and find memories that aren't hers, that there's another consciousness sharing her network, the Nebula of the future. Basically the Nebula of the past, who's still on Thanos' side, is connected to the Nebula of the future through their specific technological network. And because of this, Thanos and his crew are able to see her memories of the future. Thanos using all the stones to carry out his plan, but also his death at Thor's hands. Thanos thinks on what to do, and decides to send Nebula of the past to infiltrate the team that's time traveled and replace the Nebula of the future. And through this, he will bring Thanos to the future and stop the Avengers and Jedi from bringing everyone back. Meanwhile on Morag, the Avengers have reached the Power Stone and they successfully take it. Obi-Wan, Cody and Black Widow travel back to the Pleasant, but Nebula's pin particles fail as she's ambushed by the Nebula of the past who takes her facial plate to disguise herself and travels back to the future with a plan to bring with her Thanos of the past. Meanwhile Anakin and Rex arrive on Vormir in search of the Soul Stone. Anakin tells Rex to keep looking out for enemies that could attack them from any direction. A voice speaks to them, welcoming them as the Red Skull appears. Anakin ignites his blade instantly and Rex points his blaster towards them. Anakin Skywalker, son of the Force, Rex. Son of Django. Who are you? The Red Skull tells them that he's a guide and will take them to a treasure that he cannot possess. The Red Skull takes them to the location, the top of a cliff, telling them what they seek is in front of them, at the bottom, as does what they fear. Anakin can sense the stone is down there, but the Red Skull tells them that to obtain it, they must lose what they love, a soul for a soul. Anakin turns to Rex, as he realizes what the Red Skull means. One of us has to jump to give up our life in exchange for the stone. They both think about this and struggle to come to terms with the fact that one of them will die. I'll do it, but Rex, please tell Padme and my child how much I love them. Sir, I'm sorry, but this isn't something I can let you do. The galaxy needs you, the chosen one of the Jedi Order. Please, let me do it. I can't allow this, Captain. This isn't something you should have to do. This is my destiny, Anakin. This way, I can give my life not only for the galaxy, but for the universe. I'm sorry, Rex, but I won't allow it. We'll find another way. They stand there in silence, Anakin attempting to think about how they can get around this, but Rex knows there's no other way. Anakin senses it before it happens, but he's too slow. Captain Rex quickly pulls out his blaster, sets it to stun, and stuns Anakin, who falls to his knee and cannot move. The captain begins rushing towards the cliff. He turns around to see Anakin on one knee, unable to move. Rex, no! As a tear began to run down Anakin's cheek. Goodbye, General. Rex mutters as he runs off the cliff. Anakin regains control of his body and falls to his other knee in pain. The universe couldn't have asked for a better soldier, nor I, a better friend. I'll never forget you, Captain. Anakin closes his eyes as he opens his hand and looks down upon the soul stone, present in his palm. Meanwhile Captain America, Iron Man, Thor and the rest were successful in retrieving the other stones and they all travel back to the present. They stand there, victorious, holding all six stones. However little did they know, the nebula with them 
was a traitor and on Thanos' side. However, Anakin looks over to Obi-Wan and Cody, who both notice Rex isn't present. Sir, where's Rex? He's gone, Cody. As Anakin puts his head down in sadness, as they mourn the captain of the 501st. They all congregate in the lab, as Iron Man and Hulk put the Infinity Stones onto an Iron Man gauntlet, and they finally have all they need. They stand around, as Thor volunteers to be the one to snap his fingers, and bring everyone back. However, he's stopped by Tony and Steve, who tell the God of Thunder that he's out of shape. Hulk volunteers, saying he's perfect for the job, that the gauntlet emits gamma radiation, the same radiation that created him, and that he was meant for this. He puts on the gauntlet, and struggles to overcome the power it holds. He holds it high in the air, and snaps his fingers, and everyone's vision goes white momentarily. They all look around, asking if it worked. It worked. I can feel it. She's back! Anakin's heart feels warm, as he can feel Padme's presence once again in the universe. As well as everyone else, who was snapped away by Thanos five years ago. They were all back, and the Avengers and Jedi were successful. However, right after Hulk snapped his fingers, the Nebula of the past, who infiltrated the Avengers, activated the time travel machine, and pulls Thanos and his entire army to the future. Thanos' ship, the Sanctuary, fires down upon them, and completely destroys the Avengers headquarters, reducing it to rubble. Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Cody are buried under the rubble, but manage to use the force to prevent them from being squashed. Thanos releases his ground assault, consisting of blood-hungry beasts, and the Jedi know they need to get to the surface immediately. Obi-Wan holds the Infinity Gauntlet, and they fight off the beasts coming for them, but they're endless, and are forced to run through the tunnels to the surface. They coordinate their strikes, slashing their lightsabers back and forth, and Cody's blast of fire echoes throughout the walls. One of the beasts slashes Cody's leg, and Yoda goes to assist, but this leaves Obi-Wan vulnerable, as a beast goes right for his neck. But Hawkeye enters the battle, and shoots the beast in the eye, as he and Black Widow assist the Jedi, as they successfully make it to the surface. Meanwhile, Anakin met up with Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. As Anakin felt it through the Force, Thanos arriving on the surface. The man who took Padme from him. He sits there, anticipating the battle ahead, as the Avengers and the Chosen One walk towards him. Captain America and Iron Man take the center, whilst Thor and Anakin go around the sides. You could not live with your own failure. And where did that bring you? Back to me. Yo, Grimace! We're not gonna let you use the stones. And how are you gonna stop me? I see you've added a new member to your crew. Are you another wizard? Something like that. Let's get this over with, shall we, gentlemen? The battle commences, as one by one, Thor, Iron Man, Anakin, Captain America attack Thanos, attempting to hit him with their strongest strikes. Anakin's motivation is high in this battle, as he knows if he wins, he can get back to Padme. However, Thanos' defense was strong, and they were struggling to crack it. Thanos grabs hold of Iron Man's fists, almost ripping him in half, as he uses him to block Mjolnir, which renders Iron Man temporarily incapacitated. Anakin and Captain America attack next at the same time, but Thanos successfully uses his double-bladed weapon to land the perfect combination, catching Anakin off balance and sending him flying back, while Thanos uses the torque from this strike to punch Captain America away. Thor charges Thanos as he swings his axe imbued with lightning. He disarms the Titan, who tactfully rips the axe out of Thor's hand as they exchange blows one by one. But Thanos grips Thor by the throat and flips him over. He grabs Thor's own axe and presses down on his chest plate, going for the kill. But before he can do this, Thanos is hit directly with Mjolnir, setting him off balance as Captain America grips the hammer of Thor and deems himself worthy. Thanos knocks Thor unconscious and engages Captain America and Anakin who joins the fray. They double team Thanos, who uses his boot to disarm Anakin's lightsaber from his hand, but Skywalker had the perfect opening and uses the force to take Mjolnir from Captain America and directly hits Thanos in the back and sends him flying across the battlefield. Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one, was also worthy. Thanos decided his time alone is over and begins the ground assault as his entire army joins the battle. Anakin, Captain America, Thor and Iron Man stand there hopeless until they look around to see the wizards open portals and now enters everyone who was snapped away five years ago. Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Scarlet Witch, the Wakandas, but they were brought back momentarily ago by Hulk and the final battle commences. Yoda, Obi-Wan and Cody join the fight with the gauntlet 
and attempt to get it to Iron Man and Thor. Meanwhile, Ant-Man finds his truck in the wreckage and attempts to power up the quantum tunnel so they can get the gauntlet away from Thanos. So he can't use it again. They need to get the gauntlet there and begin making their way. Anakin groups up with Doctor Strange and Iron Man who asks Strange if this is it, the one timeline in which they can win. Strange glances at Anakin momentarily and looks back towards Tony, telling him that if he tells him what will happen, then it will not happen. Thanos asks his wizard, Ebony Moore, where Nebula is, who tells Thanos that she's still blended in with the Avengers and is waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Thanos smiles. Good. Everything is going to plan and victory will soon be ours. Yoda, Kenobi and Cody are making their way to Ant-Man's van with the Infinity Gauntlet, fighting their way through the battlefield as Thanos throws his spear and knocks it out of Kenobi's hand. Thanos rushes towards the gauntlet, but Scarlet Witch jumps in front of him and stops him in place. They fight, whilst Kenobi uses the force to gather the gauntlet, but he's in a standoff with the wizard, Ebony, who's also attempting to retrieve it. Spider-Man swoops in, using his webs to steal the gauntlet, whilst Ebony uses his magic to throw a rock at Spider-Man. But Yoda throws his lightsaber towards this, destroying it before it can reach Spider-Man, and the Grandmaster engages the wizard in a duel. Meanwhile, Scarlet Witch almost had Thanos beat, but he orders his ship to rain down fire on the battlefield, causing her to disengage, allowing Thanos to escape. But the firing stops as Thanos' ship turns its cannons towards the atmosphere. Iron Man's confused as he asks Friday what's happening, who reports that five unrecognizable ships have entered the atmosphere. Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda sense it through the force as through the clouds into five Republic battleships that begin raining fire at Thanos' command ship. The ships are no doubt commanded by Mace Windu and other Jedi Masters who have come to assist them, and Anakin will never forget the presence of his apprentice Ahsoka through the force. Yoda successfully kills the wizard as he and Obi-Wan join Spider-Man and escort him towards Ant-Man's van. But as they're about to reach it, Thanos throws his spear into it, causing it to explode and sends Spider-Man, Yoda, Obi-Wan backwards. The gauntlet drops into the center of the battlefield as Thanos, Anakin, Iron Man and Thor can see it. They all rush in as Thanos preemptively kicks Iron Man in the chest back and focuses a punch on Anakin who uses the force to reduce its burden and Thor engages Thanos whilst Captain America holds him in place. Thor uses all of his might to press down on his blade, almost reaching Thanos' skin, but the Titan overcomes his strength, headbutts Thor, and sends him flying as Thanos picks up Captain America and throws him over his shoulder. But as he does this, Captain America grabs the gauntlet out of Thanos' grasp and looks to his side to see Nebula in the open and throws it towards her, thinking this is the Nebula of the future. But he was mistaken, and this was the Nebula of the past, still on Thanos' side. <laughs> Wrong move, Avenger. <laughs> Thanos smirks as he and Nebula walk towards each other, about to hand over the gauntlet to Thanos. But Anakin sensed it through the force that this Nebula was a fake and pulled her towards him with the force, quickly ignited his blade and decapitated her on the spot. Anakin grabs the Infinity Gauntlet and goes to put it on, but Thanos was too fast and punches him away. However, Anakin's grip on the glove remained firm and although he was forced to let go, he pulled all six of the Infinity Stones off and they fell onto the ground. Thanos acted instantly and starts putting them back on, the Mind Stone, then Space Stone. But before he can do any more, Anakin hits the stones with a burst of force energy, which disperses them away from Thanos. But Anakin grabs onto the Power Stone with the force and opens up his lightsaber and replaces his Kyber Crystal with the Power Stone, and it now burns a deep magenta. Anakin struggles to contain the power in his palm as the godly might of the Power Stone rushes through his veins, but he stabilizes it as he feels his power rise considerably. He looks over at Thanos, a slight hint of fear on his face as he looks upon the Chosen One. Anakin rushes Thanos and they engage in the climactic duel. The power of Anakin's lightsaber was like nothing he had experienced before as Thanos could not successfully block any of Anakin's strikes. Thanos used the Mind Stone to try and deceive Anakin, altering his surroundings to confuse him. But the Force was Skywalker's ally and he could not be deceived, sensing through the deceptions. The duel was intense as Anakin pushed Thanos back with the Force, but the Titan looked at his feet to see the Time Stone and goes to reach for it. If he gains a third Infinity Stone, his victory will be assured and he will no doubt overpower Skywalker. 
but he looks up to see Anakin on top of him and swinging down with the Power Stone powered lightsaber. Thanos goes to block, but Anakin was too fast and cuts off Thanos' arm and spins around using the force to thrust his lightsaber deep into Thanos' chest cavity, destroying his heart and lungs. The Titan is forced to his knees as Anakin watches as he uses all of his energy to breathe, but no air enters Thanos' lungs. He takes his last breath and the Titan falls to the ground, dead and defeated. He collapses from fatigue, but is helped up by his brother Obi-Wan. With Thanos' death, the battle was won as the Jedi in the sky and the ground forces were enough to clean up the remainder of Thanos' army. The Jedi come down, including Ahsoka, to congratulate Anakin, Obi-Wan and Yoda on their victory. As Anakin embraces Ahsoka after five long years apart and whispers in his ear that Padme has returned. Anakin is overjoyed with their victory and wants to head back immediately, but they have some unfinished business to do. The next day, they go to put the stones back where they came from. Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, Doctor Strange as well as Obi-Wan, Yoda and Anakin stand there ready to send Captain America off on his journey. But before they do this, Obi-Wan asks Doctor Strange if they can briefly use the Time Stone to help them as he explains that their galaxy is under the threat of a Sith Lord called Darth Sidious and wonder whether they could use the stone to help figure out his identity. Strange says it's the least they can do for their help and he activates the Time Stones searching through as many timelines as possible to find the answers the Jedi seek. And he provides them with this, showing them images of the Sith Lord's true identity as Sheev Palpatine. And to find proof of his identity, he shows them his secret base in the industrial region of Coruscant. The three Jedi stand there in shock, but Yoda thanks him for doing this. He gives the time stone to Captain America, who sets off on his journey. The Jedi get ready to board their ship, and the Avengers give them their farewells. Iron Man, Thor, Hawkeye, Black Widow, and many more thank them for their service and welcome them back anytime. They re-enter the Star Wars galaxy to find everyone that disappeared five years ago has returned. They arrive on Coruscant and Anakin wants to see Padme desperately, but they go to the Senate building immediately to Palpatine, already talking with the Republic Security Council, but the Jedi proclaim that he's under arrest for treason against the Republic. They engage in a fight Palpatine against the entire council, a fight in which Palpatine had no chance. Palpatine against the entire Jedi Council. He was arrested and will go to trial for his crimes against the Republic. After this, Anakin goes to see his wife Padme, who was at their home, and hugs her tighter than he ever has before. His heart is overcome with joy and love, as he can sense the twin children, still alive in her, and finally, he once again has everything he's ever dreamed of. They will remember Rex dearly, and never forget the sacrifice he made for them. Padme thanks Anakin for bringing her back to him, and Anakin promises that they'll never be apart again, but also jokes that because five years have gone by, that they are now the same age. In the weeks following, the Jedi begin to repair and facilitate the trillions of people who have returned to the galaxy, but the Jedi Order would help in this, maintaining peace around the galaxy. Anakin invites Ahsoka and Obi-Wan around to their house often to make up for all the lost time together. And eventually the day would come where Padme successfully gave birth to Luke and Leia and he finally begins his happy ever after. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch What If Anakin Never Turned to the Dark Side animation or What If Anakin Killed Palpatine animation. Please let me know what you thought of the video and leave a like. This video took a lot of effort to make. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.